pretty cool. Uh, another thing that you guys might want to do is uh, scale it by a different uh, x value or y value. You don't want the scale to be uniform. And that's uh, very achievable. All we have to do is grab a component mask and mask out the red channel. And do the same thing with the green channel. And we multiply both of these nodes by uh, parameters. So I could call this one parameter normal normal UV scale, or I could call this detail normal X scale. And I could call this one detail normal Y scale. And then I can append these back together. And plug that in. So now I can give this a greater X value. And that works pretty good. So I'll bring that back down to 10. And I'll just set up a static switch parameter to turn that functionality off. So to do that, we can just right click, go to uh, parameters, static switch, and we'll call this B as detail normal. And we'll go ahead and plug this guy into slot A. And so we'll plug our regular normal map into slot B. And we'll connect this. And it disappeared because default value is off, but if we turned it on, it would come back, which is pretty cool. And the last thing I want to do, well, not the last thing, but the last most important thing I want to do is give us some bump map, or not bump, but bump offset stuff going here. So let's go to utilities and grab a bump offset. And this is where my grayscale map down here is going to come into effect. And we don't have a name for this yet, so we'll convert it to a parameter and we'll call it height map. And we'll go ahead and plug the red channel into height. And We'll use that for texture coordinate. And we'll probably have to plug this guy into here too, uh, depending on what you want to do with it. But just to play it safe, we'll keep it in there. And if we need to change it later, we can. And I'm just going to clean up really quick by, by plugging in this guy into everything that this used to be plugged into. So I'm just going to pause this really quick and do that. All right, so that's taken care of. And nothing happened here because right now our bump offset is set to reference plane of 0.5, which is gray. So it's not going to have a change no matter what we do here. But I will change the height ratio down to 0.025. 
and I want to bring in another uh, the last static switch parameter. And we'll just call this one B as height map. And we'll plug this in a slot A. And to bypass it, we'll just plug our regular UVs in the slot B. And god damn it, I'm gonna have to replug all these back in again because I wasn't thinking. So I'm just going to pause again and, and do that. All right, so now that that's done, it's looking like we might be pretty much finished up here. Uh, for the prototyping phase though, one thing that I like to do is uh, just give uh, our material the ability just to have a color, pretty much. So I'm going to hold V and bring out a vector param, and we'll call this diffuse color. And we'll set it to, let's see here, oh, this is chugging. Whatever, 0.43 sounds fine. And we'll just do uh, another static switch parameter. And we'll call this B as diffuse map. And we'll plug that guy into slot A and this guy into slot B. And we'll leave it off for now, so. Just for the time being, we no longer have diffuse map functionality. We just have a color. So we could set it to red or whatever we want to do. And we could just uh, lay down some quick colors with whatever's going on. And this pretty much does it for like my master material. If I want to add any more functionality that I want spread across my entire material, a library, I can just come into this master one and edit it and add some stuff and the rest of my materials in my material library that instance this master material will inherit all of those properties and, and changes. So that way I only have to edit one material instead of editing all of them, which is extremely useful. So I'll compile this and just to get started here with the pillar I brought in I can come into materials and I can right click and go to new material instance constant and I can call this mi underscore pillar for material instance and then the uh, material instance editor comes up and for parent we can just select this guy our master and hit okay and just like that and it inherits all of the parameters we just put in there so this is just like a very default material that we could use so now quickly we could test some of these features and see if they help us out so I could go to my static mesh here or first I'm gonna open up my material instance constant that I have which is already over here and for the normal map I can just go ahead and grab our pillar and go ahead and plug that in there. And one thing I want you uh, to know is you don't see our diffuse and our bump map or our detail normal slot over here because those don't show up unless we enable them with our static switches. So if we enable the diffuse map, we have a diffuse slot to work with. Same with a height map and detail normal. But for now I'm going to leave those unchecked. So we have this and we can come into our static mesh tab and select our pillar and assign it over here. 